All right, you guys, so under here is a 1.5 liter four cylinder with a turbo. Now, typically this thing makes around 205 horsepower. Uh, Jack, you have done a couple of mods to this. What are they? Yeah, so I threw this uh, cold air intake right here. It's from MA Performance. And then uh, we also did a exhaust swap with uh, another MA Performance uh, part. All right, so first things first, I mean, I have never been a huge Civic fan until I drove the 2024 Type R, and now I'm starting to love these things. I'm very excited to see how this thing compares to the 2024 Type R. I do know that the new SIs actually have the exact same power as the 2018s. Kind of makes this more of a reason to just go with the used 2018 if you care about saving money. Um, but this red color, would you say this is probably like the flashiest color that they make for this car? Yeah, it's called Rally Red. And we got, uh, he actually painted these uh, gray calipers yellow, and I want to do this for those of you that follow the channel with my red Maserati Gran Turismo, I think red and yellow with the brake calipers, it just completes the look. Very clean wheels as well. And you gotta love the spoiler. Now I actually gotta ask you this, is this uh this comes on that size from the it factory? Does, okay. Yeah. That is very clean. The back end of this car especially with the aftermarket exhaust you put on this, has a strong resemblance with the Type R. Uh, just a little less spicy all around, but still a very, very clean overall car. So door panel here, some soft touch, some hard touch, but it's pretty clean. Nice little stitching in here as well. And dude, I absolutely love these seats. SI stitched in there. They look very, very sporty and they're extremely comfortable. A nice little carbon fiber touches all around in here too. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. So of course we got the fully digital display inside of the gauge cluster here. Uh, that is not customizable. There are some selectable drive modes, but um, you're stuck with this one, which hey, I think it looks pretty good. Um, in the actual center here though, you're able to uh, configure what you want displayed in there. So um, this one's probably the coolest one because it actually shows you the percent or how much power or brake power you're using. So as you can see, as I touch on that brake pedal, the pressure goes up and same thing will happen with the uh, gas pedal. Let's give it a, a few revs real quick. I uh, drove an Audi RS5 that had that exact same thing. It's very cool to see that in the Civic Si. Very spacious, roomy interior, nice infotainment system. I like this shifter a lot. And without further ado, let's get driving. We just got done reviewing the 1996 NA Miata, which also had a manual. I mean, first things first, the clutch in the manual in here, or the stick, feels way, way better uh, in terms of like it's more forgiving. It, it just feels a little bit stiffer, which is kind of what you want. You don't want a loose shifter. Um, but it has around the same amount of power. Uh, Miata is definitely going to be a little bit slower than this. But um, I'm glad I didn't go from like a C7 Z06 to this because that would have been a not a proper way to review this car. This thing has enough power. So immediately up to 45 miles an hour. Um, on the way to our little recording spot here, uh, Jack did a quite the extreme pull. We were not going to be mentioning any mile per hour numbers here, um, but I was surprised with how fast this thing can uh, get close to the triple digits. First of all, uh, when did you get this car? I picked this up uh, off the lot in 2017, December, right when it came out. So you've literally had this thing for like seven years? Yeah, it's getting up there. <laughs> wow. And you put 47,000 miles on it. Um, yes. Anything, has anything happened that has left you like stranded or having to take it to the shop and get something fixed up? Initially, I had a faulty battery, but I think that was about it. Um, the car wouldn't start a couple times, but I think that was mainly due just to the battery. Um, no, no real problems with the car itself. And nothing, you know, I, I don't hear any weird noises, but like no concerns for the, the future with this thing that you can see so far? No, I, uh, I love the reliability and uh, how easy it is to, you know, just do a couple quick mods yourself to this car and stay cheap. <laughs> Classic Civic right there. For those of you that don't know, me and Jack actually work together and every time I go to... Oh, radar detector. Um, every time I go to the parking garage to start the Maserati up and go home, I have to worry about it starting up every time. I'm sure it's not a concern for you. So this thing, I'm just paired with the, you know, having this with the manual, I don't know, man. It, it makes it so much more enjoyable. Was this your, uh, your first manual car that you've ever had? Yeah, my brother has a 2014 SI, and so 
um, I kind of fell in love with the way that that car drove and uh, was really excited when this 2018 came out. Were there any like other cars? I know you mentioned my Mustang EcoBoost was something you were considering. Yeah, I was kind of looking at the EcoBoost. I was looking at the WRX a bit um, and a couple other uh, comparable cars, but uh, landed on the SI because uh, I thought that the uh, 10th gen looks really good. Um, the body lines I feel like um, are pretty sporty. Um, it's a very reliable car, get high mileage, and uh, the tech was pretty good at the time as well compared to the other options. Most definitely, yeah. I mean, sure, this doesn't have LED strips everywhere, but I mean, you get the heated seats, you got the sport button, so we can go in and put that uh, in sport mode now, which is actually going to stiffen up the suspension. Uh, it's going to make it a bit more responsive. Are you aware of anything else of what that sport mode, uh, button does? Yeah, it just tightens handling a little bit as well. But. Okay. And if we get to a spot, we'll definitely test out uh, the cornering here. But I mean, I can tell you guys right now, you can thrash this thing around. We do got a police officer nearby, so we're not gonna do it just yet. But um, this is front wheel drive. And I, I will say with the Civic Type R, I was on the fence about whether or not I liked front wheel drive. The SI just does feel like a really good kind of combination of everything. I don't feel, when I'm, when I'm kind of going into a little bit of a corner and uh, pushing on that gas pedal, it doesn't really feel as much of like, it's sucking me in, whereas the Civic Type R did. So, um, likely because the Civic Type R is, I think, over, yeah, over 300, 315 horsepower. Um, and you may be like, oh, dude, you know, this thing only makes 205. Like, why wouldn't you get the Civic Type R? I think this, with the manual transmission, this is fast enough, with, without a doubt. I, I, Jack, what, how, how would you, uh, what would you say about that? It's like, have you gotten used to the speed? Do you wish you got something faster? Yeah, definitely. I mean, 205 seems a little light, um, but around corners, this thing is, is, is really fun. I've been enjoying it, and uh, I feel like it's enough for this car. Um, I have thought about tuning it and just giving it that extra little boost and uh, dropping the rev hang a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably the next step for it um, if I keep it for another couple of years. That is, uh, I'm glad you mentioned the, the rev hang because right when I got in this thing, um, that's something you'll notice immediately. <laughs> when you shift gears, dang, we got the cops everywhere today. Not, it's one negative thing about being in a bright red car. Uh, I'm used to it though. Um, but yeah, when you go to shift, the revs just kind of hold up high and it's, yeah, different from a lot of other manual cars that I've driven. What, what is that? So far, being in this car, that's probably my biggest complaint. Do you, is there anything else about this car that's like, I don't know, you, you, do you have any issues with? No, I agree. You can definitely bang through gears if you're going uh, fast, but um, that rev hang does definitely hold you back a little bit from, from having as much fun as it could be. I can see that, absolutely. So you definitely feel the 200-ish horsepower when you're going uphill. I think on a straight and on a downhill, I mean, this thing moves. And yeah, the steering is, I mean, I think it's very sharp. Here we go. Ah, that is nice and easy for this thing. So all in all, guys, I mean, I've looked at the used market on these cars and they seem to hover around, I think, Jack, yours would probably be valued at like 26,000, which is kind of insane because that's literally what you bought the car for. Or, yeah, but uh, the market has been ridiculous lately. So, I mean, for 26,000, you're gonna get something that's probably never gonna break. And if it does break, it's not like you're gonna be spending a whole bunch of money to keep it going or repairing it. Uh, you get something that's fast enough. Again, I think getting something between two to 400 horsepower, two may be a little bit on the low end, um, but it makes sure that you're not gonna be an idiot. So um, I'm starting to appreciate cars that hover around these power numbers because you actually get to really use them on the street and not be concerned. Watch this. I mean, all the way till the end of second gear and we're up to speed and it just makes it fun like that. All in all guys, I mean, if I had to rate this car out of 10, um, for $26,000, I'm gonna have to give it like an eight. 
because it's not going to be costly to maintain. It's like a load of fun to drive. You get the manual. Um, I'd say from this drive, do it if you're looking at one of these already. Uh, Jack, to leave off on some final thoughts here, what would you tell somebody who is looking at getting, let's say, a, a Honda Civic Si, relatively the same amount of mileage? What should they know before buying one? Um, yeah, I think that this car has been just super reliable for me. I've been able to do my own oil changes. I've been able to do um, some simple repairs um, and then ob obviously some cosmetic stuff and uh, some I've I, I swapped the exhaust myself. It's very easy to work on. This car is fun just on a daily uh, basis as just a daily driver. You, you can take it to the track, but I think um, just going around on back roads, hitting corners um, and having the car just pull you through the corners is, is like the most fun way to drive this car. I can absolutely respect that opinion and I can see why after driving this thing. Guys, if you have any questions about this car, drop them down in the comments. I'll just give Jack a text and uh, he can answer if you have anything super specific about the whole ownership experience with this thing. And if he ever does tune it or modify it, I'm sure we'll be back to just see, you know, where it stands after that point. Uh, but right now, yes, this car could use a little bit more power, um, but it's, it's in a very nice sweet spot. So let me know what you guys think about this. If you own one, let me know your thoughts. Um, and yeah, appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.